As a coach, I get to interact with a lot of different people. And I have discovered that there are multiple different types of people and they fall into subcategories, but there are three main categories of people when they first come to me. And the first group of people is the people that believe that just because something hasn't been proven impossible means that they will try to do it. So they will go out and they will try to achieve something that they believe that they want to achieve. And those people will call them the high achievers. And then we have a group of people that see other people achieving greatness and they say, well, he achieved it so I can try to achieve it. So they're the followers. Let's call them the followers, okay? And then there's a third group of people and this is the group that most people fall into. Most of the people that come to me, I call these people the self-destructors because they are so hell-bent on convincing themselves that they can't achieve greatness that they speak it into existence. It essentially becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the most painful part about it for me is I feel like I'm screaming into a void trying to tell these people the potential that they have, but they don't hear me. And the reason why they don't hear me is because they are spending so much time and energy trying to convince themselves that they are not enough. They are not good looking enough. They are not fit enough. They are not smart enough. They are not charismatic enough. They don't have what other people are sometimes born with. And for that reason, they do not even strive to achieve their full potential. Sometimes I just wonder, what is the best way of getting through to these people and showing them that they are not the best at these things, but they can make massive improvements. That's what life is all about. Life isn't about having a better starting point than Dan. Life isn't about being better looking than Dan. Life is about becoming the best version of you that you can possibly be. If only these people took the energy and the commitment that they have towards trying to convince themselves that they are not worthy and pointed that energy in the right direction towards self-improvement in all aspects of life, this is what I call the, um, the five pillars of self-improvement. Number one, the physical. You have the body. Number two, you have financial, the money. That is very, very important. Number three, the spiritual, the God. I think that that is the most important, so it should probably be number one on the list. Number four, the relational, your family, your friends your social relationships. And then number five is the mental, the intellect, improving what you know, trying to teach yourself on a regular basis, learn new things. The truth is you need stress in all of these areas of your life or you are not going to feel complete. You need to feel stressed on a regular basis. You need to feel like you are not smart enough. You need to feel as if you are not pursuing God enough. You need to feel like you are not achieving the financial goals that you are trying to achieve. If you are comfortable in any of these five aspects, it means that you are fundamentally lacking and that there is probably something that you need to, there, there's a new goal that you need to set. You need to go out and try to achieve something. As a man, I just think that's imperative. How can you not be trying to better your physical condition? How are you tr not trying to take better care of your body? How are you not trying to improve your financial situation? If your family right now lost all of their money, if they needed an operation that was hundreds of thousands of dollars and they didn't have insurance, would you be able to pay for that for them? If your church their building burned down. Would you be able to help them build their, their building back up? These are all financial reasons. These are all reasons for you to go out and try to achieve more financial success. And ultimately, that is one where people can get led astray a lot. I've talked about in previous videos how people that focus all on the money, 100% destined towards destruction. 
it is the root of all evil when it is not being pursued in a godly way with all of these other things in mind. The spiritual. If you are not pursuing your relationship with Christ, your relationship with God, if you are not trying to become better in that aspect, you will be doomed. <laughs> Number four, relational, the family. If you are not actively trying to improve the quality of your relationships with others, trying to reach others and benefit their lives, have a positive impact on them, you are severely lacking. And the mental side of things, if you think that for some reason high school or college marked the end of learning for you, you are severely mistaken and you need to reevaluate. I love being a fitness coach. It is my dream job and I love working with people because it gives me the chance to help people discover their full potential. I always tell people when they're first getting signed up for my coaching, I tell them my goal is to get more out of you than you would have been able to get out of yourself. I want to be able to push you further than you would be able to go by yourself. That is what it is all about. But it's very difficult when you run into these people that are hell bent on their own self-destruction and proving that they are the victim. I can't lose weight. I can't lose weight, it's my metabolism. Calories in, calories out doesn't apply to me. These are objections that I hear on a regular basis. How can you tell yourself that? Yeah, sure, you may have some sort of genetic condition where you don't burn quite as many calories every single day compared to Dan, but the fact is, it doesn't matter. And the fact that you have a disparity, the fact that you have a disparity gives you the opportunity to succeed in spite of that disparity, thus creating an even more impressive story. A story that is more inspirational, a story that can be used to inspire other people and have a great effect on the lives of others to help them see their full potential. One of the biggest objections I run into, people say, I have hypothyroid which means that your metabolism probably isn't operating the best it possibly can. I personally have hypothyroid. I competed in my first bodybuilding show and won while not even knowing that I was hypothyroid. We figured out shortly after. And then I spent plenty of time doing cuts and bulks, losing weight, gaining weight, controlling my nutrition, that should not stop you from being able to control your fitness. I have always been able to control the way that I look, whether or not I have a disparity or not. I hope that some of you guys found this video very, very helpful. If you guys are interested in my coaching, my fitness coaching, you can make sure to go to brandonclarkfitness.com. The link will be in the description. Um, if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, um, I'm trying to post a lot more regularly on there as well. Um, but other than that, make sure you like the video. If you do enjoy this type of content, subscribe, drop a comment down below as well. Um, and let me know what else you guys want to see because I'm committed to posting on here. Um, and I think about these things throughout the day. They build up as I talk to my clients throughout the day, as I talk to you know new people that are applying for my coaching. And so I'm just trying to be able to come on here and get it all out and hope that it helps some of you guys and points you the direction that you should be going. I'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.